Yo, good morning here from the fire dock. Today we are headed over to Tiri Tiri Matangi Island. It's a wildlife sanctuary and apparently one of New Zealand's most important conservation projects. Yeah, we're super excited to go there. We've heard a lot of great things about it from you. Yeah, Rachel and Raiden, hope I pronounced the name correctly, and I believe also Peter Gerard. You mentioned it in our last um, Whangaparaua video. Yeah, right now we're at the fire dock. We're just waiting for our ferry to arrive. Yeah, we've got our face coverings because as of November 19th, it did become mandatory to wear face coverings again on any public transport in Auckland. So shout out to Charlie's Laundry, our friends not sponsored or anything, we just like your masks. <laughs> <laughs> should we head on over to the platform? I think we should. Let's go. Let's go. That's all right. Um, there you go. Thank you. Just arrived on the island. If you are looking to do this cruise, it's $92 for the guided tour and it's $82 for the non guided tour. Both of them are returned, so it's the 75 minutes here and the 75 minutes back. Pretty excited because I was looking at the little pamphlet. You can see a kōkako on the island if you're lucky. This one here is the kōkako. Apparently, there's two Ataras living here too, so how awesome is that? Looking forward to finding some animals. Look at that. You've spotted a tui. Because we've opted for the guided walk at the start, you split off into three groups and we're going to the coast to coast walk, which is going to take us about two hours. The real massive benefit about being on one of these guided walks is um, Peter, who's our guide, is explaining all the different kinds of plants as well as he knows the sound of the bird calls. So we were just at a spot where we thought there was going to be a kokako, but we just couldn't see it. Everyone stopped off to see if we can spot a kokako. but we can't see it. <laughs> Trying to spot it. We've seen lots of other birds so far. We've seen the orange saddleback as well as the whitehead and tuis and stitch birds as well. So yeah, so far so good. <laughs> Look at this beautiful kereru. Yen actually found this one and it's not shy, it's staying so we can get a good shot of it. Beautiful. Pretty cool, nice find Geek. Thank you, yeah just spotted him sitting there and he's been there for quite a while just chilling out and looking out over the water. He's checking out the view just like us. Yes. <laughs> There's been so many birds huh? There has, but they are very fast and quite shy, so it's hard to spot them. But a lot of their sounds, like the songs, are so pretty. Like New Zealand birds are really pretty sounding. We're so happy right now. We have just spotted a tiny peak of the kōkako. Amazing. You can. Did you hear that? I can just hear it over there. It sounds like a little bit like a monkey howling a little a bit. monkey <laughs> And it was one of the birds that I really wanted to see. They are grey with a majestic blue under thingy here. <laughs> a wattle, yes that's the word. Yeah, Yen's been paying attention. I have. But yeah, they're absolutely beautiful. But they're not the rarest bird that you're going to see on this island. The rarest bird is actually the takahe. Apparently if we go closer to the lighthouse there is a chance we may see it. Because it's just laid chicks. I think this might be my lucky day. I think I found the takahe. It's going away right now. I think that was the takahe. So Yen reckons that I didn't actually see a takahe because... Uh... Yeah, I reckon you saw a pukeko. <laughs> why? Why do you think that? <laughs> it just looked like a pukeko. <laughs> so but we... they do look very very similar though. So I was thinking we should probably explain why Peter's so excited about the takahe. <laughs> yeah, they're super rare. <laughs> they were thought to have been extinct up to 1948. When they got rediscovered again. So they were officially extinct for like 50 years and they're a flightless indigenous bird to New Zealand. Yeah, there's only two pairs of them on this island. 
which is already quite a lot considering they're quite territorial. So it was pretty amazing that we might have seen one. <laughs> <laughs> Yen and I are just browsing through the gift store and the good thing about this place is if you do buy something all of it goes back into the proceeds for the conservation of this island and Peter was saying that $400,000 was raised last year which was actually more than what Doc provided for the conservation of the island so all these people are volunteers they don't get paid anything so that's super impressive and it's really good to see and a great thing about New Zealand as well I'm going to contribute I found a good book New Zealand birds it's got just the right amount of words for me to read <laughs> I think we'll get this one for Myra <laughs> yeah little baby Myra who's not really a baby anymore we're gonna see you tomorrow so this is coming your way <laughs> This is a pest-free island and that means that there are no food shops on the island just like Rangitoto. You can buy drinks though, cold drinks from the gift shop. But first we've got a couple of our snacks, or Peter's chosen these. Corn nibbles and... Beetroot chips. Beetroot chips. <laughs> This is the third lighthouse that we've seen now. The first one was Cape Renga, of course. And then just in the previous vlog, Monaco Heads Lighthouse. And this one is New Zealand's oldest operational lighthouse. Not the oldest lighthouse, because that one goes to um, Pancaro Head in Wellington. But yeah, this one was first lit in 1865. Thank you for that wealth of knowledge. <laughs> I memorized some facts. So unlike the Monaco Heads lighthouse, you can't go up this one, but you can go up the watchtower. So that's where we're going to go check out now. That watchtower or signal tower is used to communicate with ships in the past. They had all these different flags. You might have seen me pull one out before. And they stand for each of the letters of the alphabet and then some for numbers as well. And they have different meanings to them too. So yeah, that was an interesting little stop. <laughs> Our lucky day. We've also found a giant yeah, wetter. It's hidden right in this little crevice over here. I can't believe it. We just saw a kokako having a little swim in that little bird bath. Thank you to the person who spotted it down there. <laughs> that was amazing. I can't believe we saw it so closely. Wow. This has been such a cool trip guys. I definitely recommend it, especially if you love birds like I do and Yen is growing too. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, this place is excellent for bird watchers, nature lovers. Yeah, absolutely. And a lot of the walks here are very easy to do. We're just gonna head back over to the ferry now to catch our 3.30 ferry. Don't be late for it because it won't wait for you. $480 if you need to get a water taxi back out there. <laughs> um, and we're gonna go back to Auckland City and maybe check out the viaduct area and- so we're gonna find some food? Yes, find some food. <laughs> When we came out of the ferry, I spotted OK Gift Shop, which has been around for years, but I noticed that inside the store you can get some official America's Cup merchandise. And I've been talking to Yen <laughs> for ages about wanting to get one of these tees, you know, because the America's Cup is on. And, I, you know, I'm a bit of a bandwagon guy, I'll admit, because I don't know that much about sailing. But we always cheer. You gotta support <laughs> Team New Zealand. 80 bucks, but it's going to a good cause. Team Supporting New Zealand. Team New Zealand. <laughs> 2020. Oh, wait, it's, the race is gonna be 2021. That's Team right. New Zealand, 2021. Let's go. <laughs> Since we're already here, we might as well go try find the Team New Zealand yacht. I think I saw Luna Rosa stables just around the corner. Did you? I don't know. I want to see Team New Zealand. <laughs> We found an official America's Cup store and we just saw some of these Prada Luna Rossa. Looking at the competition. Yeah, let's see how much these... This, this jacket is 1130 Wow, oh my goodness. <laughs> yeah, that's pretty expensive. In the viaduct you're going to find the official America's Cup Village. Team New Zealand won't have to race until March but of course you've got the Louis Vuitton Cup which is going to start running from January. I actually found all this information out from one of the security guards that was working here. I didn't, I didn't know personally. Yeah, so they're still on holiday which means we won't get to see the boat. But... Yeah, well, we did see the Luna Rossa shed which is just right behind me over there and apparently the Team New Zealand shed is way on the other side. So we're just going to go see if we can have a little peek over there see what's going on. We have just caught the Prada boat, look at that, wow. She looks pretty fancy. <laughs> right, so there's the Team New Zealand base 
And uh, when it is race time, you can come to this area and watch the race on the big screen for free, which is pretty awesome. It's also pretty cool, like always coming into this area because there's a whole bunch of these, like, I don't know, million, million dollar, multi million dollar yachts. I don't want to undersell them. I don't know how much they are actually. <laughs> Look okay, who we bumped into, Thomas and Sheena from Hi, Hello. I can't believe our luck. I know. It's How so small awesome. is New Zealand, right? New yeah. Zealand is a village. <laughs> Thomas and Sheena have an awesome YouTube channel as well. It's Tasting a Plate, which do uh, food reviews from all around the world. Yes, and now back home in New Zealand, which is awesome. Mm -hmm. We're loving it. We're loving being back and super cool bumping into these two. <laughs> it's so nice seeing you guys as well. Thank you. <laughs> Well, since Yen and I are already at the Viaduct, we thought just to get into the vibe of it all, we found a place here, Hello Beastie, to eat at. Yen's already in there. And with that salty miso caramel, it's a delicious dish. Next up, we've got some Chinese roast pork belly with uh, some Korean condiments, spicy sauce, some white radish, and some cucumbers. Yeah, that's really good. The uh, pork belly itself, super crispy. <laughs> and then the inside is really nice and soft and mount in your mouth. And the spice from the um, condiments really comes through nicely with a little bit of sour pickle flavor as well. So really tasty dish. The noodles are covered with this thing called Typhoon Shelter, which I have no idea what it is, but it looks like these little crispy bits that's on top of it. So I'm gonna get a bite with the noodle and let's try and get one of these mushrooms in there too. No way, that's crazy. There's some real complicated flavors going on there. You taste a lot of the wok, and it's called the XO noodles because you can really taste the XO in there. I think that's what's in that sauce, and it's got a real nice, like, charcoal y flavor. That is absolutely delicious. Yen and I have picked a real good one with uh, Hello Beastie. Delicious. It was a really satisfying meal at Hello Beastie. Nice find. Thank you very much. <laughs> it was an awesome day being able to see all the rare birds. It was. And also really awesome to be able to meet chasing a plate. We didn't think that we'd find I them know. here. We've been the... wanting to catch up for ages and then all of a sudden ran into them here at the Vida. <laughs> yeah, we hope all of you guys have enjoyed our day out with us and uh, we're gonna have to do plenty more videos to come we've got some exciting plans coming up in the future we do but in the meantime if you guys enjoyed this episode we hope you'll give us those likes subscribe if you haven't already drop us a comment we love hearing from you and please do share our videos all that stuff really helps our channel so we super appreciate it it does catch you guys next time see you next time <laughs>